I call a member for Hawkesbury to move her motion. Thank you, Mr Assistant Speaker. Uh, I submit the following public interest debate motion for today on uh, building for a post-COVID economy. The COVID-19 pandemic had a devastating impact on the livelihoods of many people who were unable to conduct their regular business or employment or faced a reduction in income due to the life-saving measures that were necessary to deal with this unprecedented pandemic. I saw firsthand the effects of the pandemic on my constituency and the importance of a strong post-COVID recovery. The strong economic management that the coalition government is known for has ensured that during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been able to invest in areas that will ensure the recovery of our economy. The steady reopening of the New South Wales economy, easing of restrictions and the start of the vaccine rollout have all boosted confidence. New South Wales is well on the road to economic recovery and the measures we have undertaken are reflected through a reduction in the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is down to 5.4% in March 2021 from a peak of 7.2% in July last year. That's 0.8 of a percentage point above its pre-COVID level. Almost all the jobs lost during the peak of the pandemic are now recovered. Retail sales in New South Wales are up 10.7 percentage through the year to February 2021. Mr Assistant Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a government that is investing a total of $29.3 billion in the total 2020-21 health budget. $3 billion of this funding is allocated to Capital Works to continue the government's commitment to building and rebuilding hospitals and health facilities across the state. Our government is ensuring that those who need funding the most are being looked after. We are aware of the effects the COVID-19 pandemic has had on regional and rural communities throughout New South Wales. That's why in 2020-21, the government will spend more than $900 million in, uh, for health capital works in regional and rural communities throughout New South Wales. Of the 47 New South Wales hospital redevelopments or upgrades underway or set to commence in 2020-21, nearly two thirds are in rural and regional parts of New South Wales. Investment in health also assists with job creation within the industry. The New South Wales Government is providing $27 million in the 2021 budget to employ an additional 180 paramedics and control centre staff to improve response times, reduce paramedic fatigue and support safety. This is the third tranche of the government's plan to employ 750 paramedics and control centre staff over four years. The safety of our medical staff is paramount and I'm pleased that between June 2012 and June 2020, there was an increase in security staff of 23%. Everyone has the right to feel safe at all times, including within their employment. This strong investment in our health system will ensure we are well placed to also respond to any future crisis, thereby saving lives, improving health and ensuring there is minimal economic disruption should the misfortune of another disaster arise. Part of building for a post-COVID economy involves the facilitation of the vaccine rollout to ensure there is minimal disruption by COVID-19 on our day, today, lives and the economy. That is why the New South Wales Health is working closely with the Australian Government to deliver a safe, timely and effective vaccination program. This will ensure that we can go about our lives with minimal disruption and allow the economy to naturally recover through strong employment and consumer spending. The latest national accounts show the New South Wales economy grew 2.9% in the December quarter following SFD growth of 6.8% in the September quarter. This has led New South Wales 0.7% uh, below the level seen at the end of 2019. It's vital that we continue to have people return to work and to be financially independent as each individual desires to be. Our investment seeks to continue to lower unemployment in light of the challenges that we face. An important part of co post COVID recovery involves investment in our police force to ensure a safe and secure New South Wales. The recovery requires discipline and adherence to the law. Those who are rebuilding their businesses appreciate the presence of the police in the community. 
This is why the 2020-21 budget provides the New South Wales Police Force with total expenses budget of $4.2 billion and a further $549 million for capital investment, comprising $287.7 million in capital expenditure and $261.3 million of lease acquisitions. The investment into capital works creates jobs, particularly for those in the trades. And I've got to say, Hawkesbury people are tradie people, so we love this. Our government is investing $14 million in the 2020-21 as part of the program to build new police stations in Bega, Goulburn and the Jindabyne area and to carry out major upgrades to the police stations in Burke and Bathurst and construct a new police education and training centre in Dubbo. These works are being undertaken as part of the $100 million election commitment program over the four years from 2019 through to 2023. $52 million to continue the construction of police stations in Cessnock, Broken Hill, Inverell, Parramatta and Hurstville, and the acquisition of land in Port Macquarie under the $107.9 million multi-purpose police station program over the 2018 through to 2023 program. $17 million to complete construction of the Queanbeyan police station, $15 million of, uh, in 2020-21, 37.7 million over two years for property related capital works in metropolitan and rural areas. These works include commencement of new or replacement police stations under the regional small station program, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, disaster resilience, facade cladding remediation, female amenities, upgrades to solar panel programs, security upgrades and minor works. Mr Speaker, it is vital that the New South Wales Police have the resources needed to conduct their role within COVID-19 hotel quarantine operations. Mr Speaker, may I have a small extension of time? No? Successful quarantine minimises outbreaks and reduces the risk of having to engage in restrictions that, while saving lives, has a negative effect on the economy. I thank the member for Hawkesbury. Well, I thank the member for Sydney. I now call the member for Hawkesbury in reply. And thank you, Mr Temporary Speaker. Look, th this is very interesting. I've been listening to the debate and can I acknowledge the contributions from my fellow colleagues, <coughs> member for Newcastle, Oatley, Macquarie Fields, Tweed, Swansea and in particular Sydney. And I know how hard uh, the member for Sydney has been working in getting uh, Sydney back to its pre-COVID conditions. And can I say the cooperation between local government and state government, you can see that marriage, you can see that partnership. And I'm hankering for us to get back to the way we were uh, pre-COVID. So uh, thank you for working with uh, government on that in both governments. Uh, in particular. And my colleagues on this side of the House have talked about the stimulus uh, that we have been doing as a government and what we've been creating here. All I hear on the other side of the House is let's jack up the wages and let's strip away the tolls. Why do you want to jack up wages Order and strip members. away tolls? Mr. Uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker, here Order. we have, member for Shell we have a government the member who for has, Shell Harbour. We have a government who has successfully built up the COVID uh, post economy and the way to do that is to get unemployment down to 5.4 per cent at March this year. It was 7.2 per cent in July last year. It's got to count for something. Why, I, I'm sure. Now, the dine and discover vouchers were massively utilised at the recent Hawkesbury show. Can I say we had 70,000 people at that show? Almost everyone accessed the dine and discover vouchers. They love them. I think it's terrible. I think you're probably kicking yourself on the other side of the room that you didn't think of that in the first place. Oh, you know, no, 3.5 million dollars. 3.5 million people have downloaded the Dine and Discover vouchers. What a successful program that has been. That's just one initiative in the road to recovery for this state government. Member Absolutely essential. And look, if you visit the Hawkesbury, you'll see Member restaurants and bars returning to normal. You'll see tradies going about their work. We've stimulated the economy with infrastructure growth, with new build, with capital works programs. That's what it's all about, getting this economy back up and running post-COVID. I think we've done that. You've ignored your responsibility as an Member opposition and you've fallen down flat on your feet. Thank you, Mr Speaker.